Hello, welcome again to Jews Summit Biochemistry Hub. Today we'll be learning isomerisms in carbohydrates. In our previous videos, we've looked at how to structurally draw carbohydrates. Today we should be looking at isomerisms. Basically, there are two forms of isomerisms in carbohydrates: the structural isomerism and stereo isomerism. Structural isomers have quite distinct different structures. At a glance, you can see the difference in the structures. Do they have the same molecular formula like glucose and fructose? Which are the molecular formula C six H twelve O six? Glucose is an aldol helices, which means six carbon and contains the aldehyde group CHO. While fructose is a keto hazel sugar, six carbon but has the ketone group as carbon to CO. If you look at the structures, quite distinct, quite different. Glucose can form six member rings in solution, so it's a glucopyrus. White fructose can form five member ring in solution, so we call it fructoforanus. For structural stereoisomers, we have two distinct types. There are stereos, those that are not mirror images of each other, and enantiomers, those that are mirror images of one another. Now, on the diastereomers, we have anomers and epimers. In anomerism, we have the alpha and beta isomers. Anomerism exists only in the cyclic structures of sugars and not in the open chain structures. Now, for anomers, the difference in anomers is simply around the anomeric carbon, which for glucose is carbon 1. You can see, comparing alpha and beta glucose, you can see that the only difference between these two structures is in the position of the hydroxyl group. For alpha glucose, the hydroxyl group is projecting downwards, while for beta glucose, the hydroxyl group is projecting upwards. That's the only difference. If you don't look closely, you can miss it. So the differences in stereoisomers are quite hidden. You have to look closely to see them. Unlike their structural isomers counterpart. Now for epimers, the difference also isn't only around one cover. Glucose has two epimers, galactose and manose. What's the difference between glucose and galactose? It's only at carbon 4. If you look at these two sugars, at carbon 4, galactose has hydrogen and hydrogen group swapped compared to glucose. For manose, this difference will be seen at carbon 2 and not at carbon 4. And then for enantiomers, the D and L isomers of sugars, these are optically active, unlike the others. That means they have the ability to rotate plane polarized light. When an isomer can rotate plane polarized light to the right or in a clockwise direction, we say is a dextrorotatory D isomer. But when an isomer can rotate plane polarized light to the left or in an anti clockwise direction, we say that isomer is a laborotatory or L isomer. Again, we're using glucose as an example. D glucose can rotate light. To the right or in a clockwise direction. Why L glucose rotates light to the left or in an anti clockwise direction? Now, if you look at the difference in the structure, we see that the position of the hydrogen and hydrogen group side groups on carbon 2 to 4 are swapped in the L glucose structure. So the difference here is between here and here. We have hydrogen to the left in D glucose, but in L glucose as carbon 2, we have hydrogen to the right. So simply the swapping of these four substituents and these four substituents gives you the D glucose or the L glucose. What is the importance of isomerism? Particularly, isomerism is important in pharmacology. We clearly remember the drug thalidomide. Our thalidomide or dextrorotated thalidomide was previously used for treating morning sickness, sickness in pregnant women. At the time, it was discovered that the drug is also teratogenic, that is, 
has the ability to create the forms in children, which we call focomelia. Children whose parents used thalidomide to treat money sickness, we are born with deformed limbs. And via research, we discovered that although our thalidomide, dextrodotalidomide, is beneficial, its counterpart, the laboratory thalidomide or S thalidomide, is teratogenic. What's the problem? Now, in aqueous environments like in the blood, our thalidomide is able to interconvert bioresmerization to L thalidomide, causing the problems as a side effect in pregnant women. This led to the banning and withdrawal of thalidomide from therapeutic use. Thank you very much for your time today. I hope to see you next time as we learn more about biochemistry. Bye for now.